Hello everyone! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So in today's video, uh, this is a highly requested video, let me first say that. Um, we are going to be unboxing this adorable little package from Simbi Fragrances um, and giving you my out of the bottle first impressions. I have tons of oils in here that I have selected. Uh, these were some of my personal favorites from the description on the website of Simbi Fragrances. And just a little bit of information about this company. Uh, this is a woman owned company and she makes really unique fragrances, many of which are designer or high end leaning fragrances. And so these oils can be used in a number of applications in our candles in a lot of our different skincare products. The IFRA certificates are widely available, which you guys know I love. Uh, but anyways, with all that said, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So many of you have told me to try this company and we are finally here. So here is what we've got. Just cover my address there. Is this even in focus? Um, I actually honestly forgot because I've had all this housework done. As you guys know, I haven't even been able to open packages for like three weeks. So, ah, oh, so this is apple and ancient oak. You guys, some of the names on these oils are so intriguing to me. Uh, summon the spirits. And obviously I'm gonna flip the camera around once I finish showing you all, but this is just, I like to show you guys exactly how I get it. You all know these videos are unfiltered, so if something comes as a mess, you're gonna see it. But really nice packaging here. Um, this is called Black Velvet. Hmm, I wonder if this is that vanilla E1. We've got Black Orchid. You guys are gonna see a pattern in some of these called Black in something. You all know I'm really into that. Uh, green fig and green tea and fig, not to be confused with some of the hotel scents that have a lot of those vibes. Haunted library. Oh my god, you guys, I cannot wait to smell this. I hope we're focusing. Uh, old Christmas shop. We got New York at night, you all know. I've lived in New York for a number of years. I absolutely love New York. Once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker, folks. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited for that one. White Cashmere, and you guys know about me by now that I absolutely love textile fragrances. Uh, white Tea and Time. And I think that is it. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and we're gonna get to smelling these oils. And I'm actually gonna blow this candle out. By the way, this is my evening in celery flats candle. Um, I'm actually gonna blow this guy out just because I do not want like other scents going on as I'm smelling these. Um, but yeah, so as I always say at the beginning of these videos, there's always gonna be the chance that something I really like, you might not like. And there's also the chance that something you really like, I might put on my fails list. These videos are just my out of the bottle first impressions and that is all. You always wanna test these fragrances in a product before having final impressions. Um, but with all that said, we are gonna get right into this. I'm so excited and if you all are new to these videos, you'll see very fast that I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Sometimes they send me the oils, but they know in advance that I'm going to tell you my 100% honest, out of the bottle, first impressions. So I don't know, I'm like Jeffree Star's little brother of fragrances or something like that. Um, you're gonna get the tea. What should we start with? Uh, okay, maybe white time and white tea and time. I'm kind of feeling this vibe for January, you know, like that kind of fresh reset type of a vibe. So I'm gonna be putting these on some strips just so that way I can get a better idea. Ooh, wow. So she actually closes. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's like a little seal on these bottles. So that'll take me a second to get into, but I don't mind that as long as it doesn't get all over. So let's see here. I might need to get like something sharp to puncture this. Just using my little box opener here. 
Um, and this first one, white tea and thyme. I don't know, I'm expecting something that's gonna be fresh, something clean, something, I don't know, kind of bougie, upscale, hotel-esque, kind of Sunday reset, uh, spring cleaning type of vibes. Here we go. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've smelled this before. Um, oh, where have I smelled this? And that's not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of these oils are gonna be some of them dupes for or her version of different designer fragrances. Um, and I don't look at any of the notes or anything before I smell the oils. Uh, so it's just my out of the bottle first impressions. Um, but yeah, this definitely, so I'm getting the white tea. I'm not getting very much of the thyme. It's definitely white tea heavy. Um, you get like a little herbal component in the background with it, but I'm definitely getting mostly white tea with a hint of, I don't know, there's more herbals. There's some rosemary, maybe some sage. Um, it would definitely be a spa line fragrance. And I would say that this oil definitely leans upscale. Next up, let's take a look at, hmm, let's go to the other end of the spectrum and take a look at this black orchid. Now this oil, I have definitely smelled some, lots of different black orchid type fragrances. Um, sometimes you get a sort of duskier vibe, right? When you put the black with the floral and it can be just kind of a seductive, I always reference Twilight Woods, into the night. Um, almost sometimes like a wearable type of a vibe, you know, like a perfume leaning fragrance. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Oh, wow. Okay, this one's a little lighter than I would like out of the bottle uh, because usually for like a black orchid, like some of these kind of floral fragrances, you're gonna get hit with them pretty hard out of the bottle. This one's lighter. I'm actually getting a leather accord and kind of like a black cranberry type of a vibe as well. Mmm, this one I feel like is definitely spa, but it's like that kind of, mmm, hotel spa type of a vibe. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I love how the leather plays with the, um, so if any of you have smelled Candle Sciences, I want to say, yeah, Black Current, and I'll put the name up on the screen of the oil I'm thinking of, but it's actually used in my Prague candle blended with their sandalwood fragrance in my Wanderlust collection. This reminds me almost of that candle, but blended with leather. And I am feeling this. This is really sophisticated. I feel like if you walked on the streets of Manhattan and, you know, kind of in the rich section, right? And you walk past a woman, um, I mean, this is slightly androgynous too, but I feel like it's kind of more, a little bit more, I don't want to say feminine leading, leaning. Fragrance is not like gendered, right? But you walk past a woman in Manhattan, uh, I feel like this is what she'd be wearing, like carrying a leather briefcase, getting off her nine to five. Oh, I love that. I love that black orchid. My creme de la creme, as you guys know, I put them on this platter back here. Next up, let's take a look at this Summon the Spirits. And this fragrance, ooh, I like this. She puts like a little description on the bottle. Can you all see that text on there? It says, a nondescript forest scent that is confusing and fascinating in the best way. Stroll through the woods as you're surrounded by winter berries before uncovering some warmth from tonka, sweet musk, and patchouli. All right, so, this one is supposed to be kind of a winter leaning fragrance. And I encourage you all with any fragrances, brand them the way that you want to, right? So, or blend them and brand them the way you want to even better, make it original. Um, but something that's called winter does not have to be only sold in the winter, obviously. Um, but sometimes it can be nice to kind of have that on the description, just so that way you're able to see how they might suggest it, right? But obviously your branding and your business is the number one that takes precedence over all else. Okay, so here we go with Summon the Spirits and I can smell something from here that's very, mmm, really like, oh wow. Okay, I, first of all, I'm gonna say I've never smelled anything like this before. This is very unique. This is very Halloween leaning too, but in a luxury way, wow. Okay, so if you ever smelled, 
kind of those patchouli leaning fragrances. I always talk about Candle Science's fragrance that is called patchouli, but that one has more cinnamon notes to it. Um, it's like a straight patchouli, but it has all those woodsy musky, like if you've smelled by Brambleberry, they're, um, uh, oh gosh, what is it called? I'm gonna put the name on the screen. It's one of my favorite oils from Brambleberry. Uh, and wow, this is really strong out of the bottle as well. Um, I'm very intrigued by this. So if you have like a kind of apothecary like leaning line, but that's also kind of sciencey, kind of magical. Oh my God, this is your next bestseller. Wow. This is probably my favorite that I have smelled so far out of the bottle. And again, this is a very unique oil to me. Um, Wow, I'm getting like a dark vanilla vibe to this as well, like a velvety vanilla combined with that kind of patchouli. Oh, Dark Crystal is the one I was thinking of by Brambleberry. Yeah, it's almost like that, but then you put in a little bit of Makesy's, uh, the sumac and campfire fragrance. Oh my goodness, is that good. Next up, let's take a look at, ooh. Let's take a look on the same vibe at Haunted Library, just because I'm curious how this one kind of contrasts, right? Because, so for a library fragrance, I'm expecting something that has more like leather, maybe some vetiver, some oak, some woods, so a rich woody profile, right? But with that kind of skanky old book type of a vibe. So, let's see what this Haunted Library is gonna do and how it's going to contrast with some of the spirits. Ooh, this one's lighter out of the bottle, the just initial impressions. Uh, but wow, this is, so it is similar. I am also getting the leather in this as well. Um, so this one has, I'm just, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm looking at the bottle here, um, but I'm definitely getting, it says that it has like a plum note and a peach note. I'm definitely getting a plum note to this as well as kind of an apricot peachy note. It definitely has that fruity profile to it, but then also with the leather and with the kind of the violet. Uh, violet is such a really, really, really important note in perfumery, you guys. Like what made Dior's Fahrenheit, my all time favorite cologne, so famous, like literally when it was released, I believe in the 90s, was it had that black violet accord. And that is so universally loved in perfumery and fragrance when it's played right with the other notes. Um, that fragrance obviously had a lot of other stuff in it too, but the black violet was one of the, um, or the iris and black violet was one of the primary accords. So anyway, yeah, I like this. Um, Personally, I would have to say Summon the Spirits definitely takes the cake out of the bottle of these two. And you could sell the Summon the Spirits as like a haunted library type of a scent for sure. It definitely has that kind of Ivy League old book type of a vibe. Oh, let's take a look at the, hmm, let's do the New York at night. The New York at night, what do you have for us today? I'm excited for this one. This might be the one Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save this one till the end because this is probably the one I'm most excited for, being a New Yorker myself. Um, okay, let's take a look at White Cashmere. Totally changing it up here. So those of you guys who are not familiar with Cashmere, that is a really, really popular accord in fragrance as well. Um, like Cocoa Butter Cashmere, a lot of you know that scent. Wow, this one's really on. Um, a lot of our companies that we purchase from regularly have that. Um, type of a scent. But yeah, so cashmere, it's kind of a textile vibe, right? Why is flannel so famous as a fragrance? Well, again, it's kind of that textile vibe. It's where you're combining those fruity notes, kind of more sophisticated spa-like upscale fruity notes with that kind of woodsy, leathery base. And then you're kind of bringing in some, a little bit of nuttiness to it. Sometimes they can come off as perfumey, right? Um, other times they can just be really, I mean, I wouldn't describe flannel as perfumey, right? It's just kind of a sophisticated textile. So here we go with white cashmere. I'm not gonna read the bottle, so I'm turning it. 
Hmm. Okay. This is all right. I've definitely smelled this before. Um, yeah, I'm getting a cashmere. I'm getting that kind of white vibe to it, right? Um, it's kind of a blonde cashmere. It's kind of a cedary cashmere, but not overly woody. It has a strong powder component, which I'm usually not a big fan of. Um, so I could see this oil being really popular. It's probably not my one of my top fragrances from this haul. Um, oh, I just whacked myself in the face with the blotter strip. But yeah, it, so it has a strong powdery note to it. Um, yeah, I also get kind of those florals with kind of the a little bit of woods to it. Um, this one, I would say it, it doesn't really lean perfumey. It leans just kind of more spa-like aromatherapy. This one almost has a little bit of vanilla to it as well. I get like a heliotrope note or something that's kind of floral in this, that's kind of um, a floral that you don't smell as much in fragrances. Next up, let's take a look at, ooh, let's take a look at the old Christmas tree shop. So I picked out these oils in early December and I was excited for Christmas. But like I said, you guys, um, can really use a lot of these fragrances year round. Like for example, some of my best sellers are oils that I purchased from different collections. They're actually holiday collections, but they really can work. They can be more hearty fragrances actually. Um, ooh, and I'm smelling something out of the bottle. So I'm expecting something that's gonna be spicy, that's gonna be a little fruity, that might have some orange zest, a little pine to it, you know, that type of a vibe. So here we go with Old Christmas Tree Shop by Simbi. Oh yes, oh my God. Okay, so I'm first getting hit with the Fraser Fur. First of all, this is exactly what I was wanting in this type of a fragrance. This is exactly what I wanted from Candle Science's Christmas Hearth, which by the way, is one of my popular sellers. I blend it with Aztec's Winter and it's very popular at the farmer's markets, but so it's exactly what I wanted in that fragrance, but I didn't get. It. So anyways, yeah, the Fraser Fur. The Fraser Fur is the first thing. And then I'm getting something citrusy kind of on the top. It's not an orange, it's more like maybe a lemon, a bergamot, something like that. And then the base, you kind of get a light sort of spiciness to it, but it's sort of like that classic holiday spiciness. Um, if I went into West Elm in the wintertime, this is probably what it would smell like. Um, or if I went to New Carlisle, Indiana, where my mom used to go, every year and we'd see the snow like falling down as we would walk into the village shops sipping our hot chocolate. This is probably what it would smell like. Wow, this is very prominent out of the bottle. I'm excited to see how this one plays in a fragrance because yeah, old Christmas tree shop, um, it's rustic, it's, it's spicy but not headache inducingly spicy. It's fresh with that Fraser fir and spruce note but not like I'm walking into a forest fresh. You do get that component, right? But it's this blended, just cohesive accord that gives you that vibe. Next up, let's take a look at, we have four fragrances left here. I wanna take a look at this Apple and Ancient Oak. So this name, you guys really intrigues me with the Ancient Oak. And of course, I love anything Apple. I always grew up with my mom burning Macintosh Apple by um, Yankee and all that stuff. So yeah, this one just, I'm expecting something sophisticated though. And ooh, I can already smell something from here that is not what I was expecting. Uh, so let's see what Apple and Ancient Oak is gonna do. Hmm. Okay, I am getting a Macintosh Apple from this, but I'm getting that combined with sort of like a leaves fragrance, right? So you're getting, and I think that I can smell the oak in this too. So it's as if I took Macintosh apple and blended it with like leaves, fallen leaves. And I like this. I do like this. This is an upscale, oh, sophisticated fall fragrance. Like I'm reading a book and the leaves are changing colors outside my windows. I'm in one of those pictures that we see all the time on Instagram that are super sophisticated. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there and I hear nothing but the leaves gently blowing outside my large picture window. <sighs> I've got my leather bound book and I'm just sitting and reading. It's the essence of the autumnal spirit. 
done, slightly haunted library-esque. Oh, I really like this oil. It's very prominent too. You gotta kind of let this one dry down and develop on the blotter strip because what I was smelling from a foot away is not at all what I'm smelling now. I wanna take a look at green tea and fig. Now, I will tell you guys that I am usually a big fan of green tea fragrances. I love Candle Science's Green Tea and Lemongrass. I love Green Tea by Stone Candles. Uh, they usually tend to be, I would say, spa-leaning aromatherapy, definitely high-end fragrances. Might not be appreciated by everyone, but oh my God, you guys, I absolutely, I don't think I've smelled one green tea fragrance that I haven't liked, so just putting that out there. And then fig fragrances are another one that I tend to be a big fan of um, because they kind of bring that woody, earthier type of a fruit. So it's not a sweet fruity, it's more of like a, almost like a currant or something. And I am smelling something all the way from here that is really prominent and I cannot wait to see what green tea and fig is gonna do for us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this fragrance, I am getting hit with a fig initially. This is almost like a, if any of you have smelled like a petrichor fragrance, like an after the rain, like a, almost like a pavement type of a fragrance. Again, it's bringing in those base notes that make these really sophisticated and unique and designer-like. Some of these more unusual base notes and middle notes. Um, so wow, yeah, I'm getting that. It reminds me of Figuier by Stone Candles, which is a dupe for a really high-end oil um, by, I believe, Votivo. And oh my gosh, so I'm getting the green tea, but it's definitely more of the fig. And the green tea is like the top note in the background almost. It's like you get that kind of bergamot, that kind of uh, pedigree quality of a green tea, um, or what I usually smell when I smell that. And wow, these really work well together. I would say this is probably one of my favorite oils that I have smelled from this company. Um, out of the bottle, but I would say this one's not gonna be for everyone. If you don't like that really woodsy where you almost get some of the dirt in with um, the, the fig and that just really true to life, like you're picking a wild fig. Um, oh my God, this is good. This is really good. But again, it's a niche fragrance. So I would highly recommend, you know, with any oil, order a small bottle. Don't be like me and just get a 16 ounce. I'm trying not to do that as much anymore. But, um, oh my gosh, you guys, this oil is so, oh, I just whacked myself in the face. It's so different. But like, I never would have thought to put these two together, right? You get that really Italian kind of citrusy um, note with that kind of more Asian Mediterranean uh, type of a fig. We are down to the last two oils and I'm really sad. I have been wanting to try this company for so long, you guys, and I am super excited to finally be smelling some of these oils. So actually, I gotta tell you all, my friend and I, uh, one of my local friends that I met at the farmer's market that were now like fragrance besties, she comes over and sometimes we'll have a glass of wine and just smell our oils, we'll trade stuff, we'll smell each other's stuff that we think we would like, and we'll talk about our blends and all this. I'm I'm getting chills talking about it because this is my passion. Um, but she introduced me to Simbi and she actually had the Baccarat, which I would highly recommend. If you have um, the Baccarat 540 or the Lavender Haze, those are the two fragrances that she had by this company that I absolutely, I just fell head over heels for it. And I was like, I need to smell more of their oils. Um, but those two oils I don't have here just because she already like gave me some, we traded. So I have a 16 ounce of Baccarat and I have an eight ounce of Lavender Haze. Both of those oils, like I said, they're just so good. But um, that's how I got introduced to this company. And oh, I'm so, 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 so excited. So these last two, Black Velvet, and then my absolute favorite that I can't wait to smell, well, favorite by the name, um, New York at Night. Um, I'm gonna be saving for last, but Black Velvet, again, I'm hoping for kind of a seductive type of a lavender, maybe with some orchid, maybe some florals. I don't know. So let's see what this, I'm looking for an upscale vanilla, right? Let's see what this one's gonna do for us. Ooh, wow. 
Okay, so this fragrance, wow. I'm definitely, I almost whacked myself. Uh, I'm definitely getting kind of like a, again, a strong leather accord. And I normally don't like leather, but used in a very small amount in the base of these fragrances seems to be really effective. Um, it's not like aggressive at all. Like I've sometimes said about leather, like straight leather, why I don't like it. Wow. Okay, and she uses, I can tell that there's a lot of patchouli in this fragrance as well. And I normally am not the biggest fan of patchouli, but I will say like in blends, it's really growing on me. Um, wow, this is so cohesive. Um, I don't even know what I'm smelling. I would say like, if you have smelled the Dark Crystal by Brambleberry or even Candle Science's new Velvet Vanilla, it has along the lines of that, except a little more high end, right? Because you get kind of this, a little bit of leather in the base, you get a little bit of this aged worn quality to it that just makes it feel so vintage, but yet ultra modern at the same time, right? Like retro a little bit. Oh my goodness, this is good. It says it has tuberose and jasmine in it. I don't really smell the tuberose and jasmine. A little bit of jasmine I do get. Um, pomegranate, definitely it says, cassis. Um, cassis is a really unique note for those of you who don't know. It's it's kind of almost like a black currant, like an absinthe of a black currant. Um, but yeah, this one is really intriguing to me and I would like to see how this one translates into a candle because it's a little hard to evaluate out of the bottle. Like it develops more and more as it dries down on the strip. Um, but I think I'm definitely gonna be putting this one into a candle. All of my favorites from this company, my hope is to get them into some coconut apricot wax and let you guys know what I think. Comment down below if you guys would like to see a video um, talking about how these oils perform in coconut apricot. Last but not least, um, we have New York at night and I am so excited for this one. So like I said, once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker and cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, my Oudwood by Stone Candles, by the way, that used to be my Manhattan candle, I'm actually planning on discontinuing it because it has caused my candle after it's been curing for a while to have kind of a weird chemical like smell when it first lights and then it goes away, but I just don't like that. Have any of you experienced that before? Um, I've experienced it several times. I also got it once when I blended Candle Sciences um, I blended four oils of candle science together and I'll put them on the screen. And I was using it for my original London Fog candle, but then once again, after like three months, it had kind of a weird, almost plasticky like scent when you first lit the candle. So I'm hoping that this becomes, if I really like this, that this is a candidate for my new Manhattan candle because I love Oudwood by Stone Candles, but I just, it has been not performing after like three months the way that I want it to, so I've had to pull that one. So here goes New York at Night by Cindy. Mmm. Wow. Okay, I've never smelled anything like this before. What am I even getting? Wow. Okay, so there's something that's almost like kind of almost like a sweet bourbon quality, which I love in a fragrance. It doesn't smell like alcohol. A lot of people get really freaked out by tobacco and bourbon. No, it doesn't smell like alcohol or like cigarettes or whatever when it's tobacco. No, it adds a sophisticated, woody, earthy quality. I'm getting almost like a black tea to this as well, maybe as the top note. And then there's definitely some like smoked vanilla in this oil. Wow. It's a little lighter out of the bottle, right? But I'm definitely getting it pretty prominently still too. And wow, this oil, it definitely captures that nighttime vibe. Wow. So I'm also getting a rich base profile. And like I said, it's got a kind of a nuttiness, almost a smoked vanilla to it in the base. But then it's coupled with, I wanna say there's some type of berry in this in the middle and then a top note that's gotta be like black tea or something. Um, and I'll have all these descriptions obviously on the screen, but I haven't read them prior to smelling the fragrances. Um, but yeah, this is really intriguing. This is very like something that you would smell walking into 
a high-end five-star hotel in New York City at night. Wow. Well, that is gonna be all for today's video. And thank you so much to Simbi Fragrances for sending me these oils. Again, this video was in no way sponsored or affiliated with Simbi, um, but they did offer to send me some oils that I picked out on their website. Um, as I said earlier, and that helps me to be able to keep this content sustainable on YouTube. If you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I cannot wait. Let me know down below if you'd like me to try these oils and some coconut apricot cream wax, and I will post an update. Um, trying my favorites in coconut apricot. If you have tried Sydney fragrance before, leave a comment down below of what some of your favorite oils are. I would love to know. Um, like I said, Baccarat 540 as well as their Lavender Haze are just iconic. And the ones that I put on this platter up here um, that I really liked are some of my personal favorites. So probably from this haul, I would have to say my most favorite just because it's so, so unique um, was the Summon the Spirits. But again, that oil, you need to get a small bottle and smell these because I feel like some of these designer oils are very, almost like a perfume where you really wanna smell it yourself because some of them are gonna be very niche specific or very, very different from person to person, maybe even more so than some of the more basic, like Macintosh Apple, you know, we kinda have an idea of what that's gonna smell like. These designer oils get more abstract, right? So you really wanna make sure that you're smelling them and testing them in a product and making sure that it's gonna fit with your line. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light and wishing all of you happy candle making.